think now comes the all-important time when we uh, get into where we are right now. We talk a little bit about the intel. I want to say that uh, before we get into the specifics of the intel, I want to say that, first of all, we welcome everybody back to the big call uh, that was here on Tuesday and some people that maybe are here for the first time. Good to have you on with us tonight. Um, what was interesting yesterday, Wednesday, was I was watching an interview that uh, Neil Cavuto did on Fox with uh, uh, our new Secretary of the Treasury, uh, Stephen Mnuchin. And what was, I, I found myself listening, of course, for uh, the possibility of an announcement of some kind that we might, uh, might be looking forward to in terms of our currency, in terms of uh, uh, going back to the gold standard, something like that. That was not part of the uh, interview uh, for it yesterday. However, I did notice at one point uh, uh, the Secretary of the Treasury said, yes, and we will rebuild America. We will rebuild America. And I thought, aha, uh -huh. you know, that's the language that we're using on this call with that program called Rebuild America. And I thought, it seems like, uh, you know, I don't know if uh, he had listened to the call, but I understand uh, maybe his undersecretary of the Treasury had listened to uh, the last two calls. Uh, so I'm thinking that what we're trying to get out and put out is being heard uh, somewhat by the administration, and I'm happy for that. And I'm going to say some things tonight in my segment uh, that might be of interest to not only the Department of the Treasury, but maybe to the whole administration. We'll see. But I think that's, uh, that was really cool. And, of course, I stopped it, paused it, went back, listened to it again. I said, yep, he said rebuild America. And that is what we're going to do, guys. And we're going we're gonna to do that. That's going to be part of what we're going to do in terms of our um, TAP program, which is the Abundance Project. And uh, so that, that's cool. I thought that was fun. Now, uh, also, what we are seeing in terms of, let's go to a rock right now, what we have heard today, as early as 5 o'clock in the morning, we heard that Iraq is exchanging uh, currency in the Middle East with four or five countries uh, at a rate uh, I heard this morning a uh, rate of $4.96. Uh, so it was really approaching $5, and that was really interesting. We've heard of a rate of it five twenty, uh, but I, I can confirm $4.96 was exchanged uh, in three or four countries in the Middle East. So Iraq is kind of doing their thing on a quasi-international basis now. Uh, they, uh, they started, guys, uh, a few days ago, I think it was on Saturday, if I remember right, with a bond offering of uh, sovereign Iraqi bonds, of one, a $1 trillion offering. And I believe uh, four or five countries of the 23 countries that were offered this took advantage of it right away. Uh, France was one, and the U.K. was one, I think, and also uh, Russia, and I believe um, uh, there were probably two or three others, and I know some folks from our country also took advantage of those bonds. Um, and that's a really cool thing. I thought to myself, well, if Iraq can offer a trillion dollars worth of bonds to uh, shore up their infrastructure... Why couldn't we do the same thing here? And that's what I'm going to talk about in a minute or two. Uh, it just gave me an idea that we kind of talked about a little bit on the last few calls, but I think we can sort of nail this down a little bit more and, and give uh, the administration uh, some ideas of what I'm thinking about. And uh, maybe it's something that, that can be put together. Maybe it's something that can be put out there. So, so Iraq also... Uh, have two brand new flags like the one, I don't know if it's iridescent or not, 
but it's similar to the one that China made uh, a gift to Iraq of, uh, and that was 38 feet wide and 60 feet long. Uh, really, really big flags. They had two more flags that they, un I understand, that they made themselves, that Iraq made, and they are going to install these flags one on one side of the Tigris River and one on the other side of the Tigris River uh, and on very tall flagpoles, of course. And I think that's really symbolic and really cool. And I think that'll, uh, that'll really set them off beautifully. Now, uh, the other flag, if you guys remember, that China gave them is on a very nice part of Mosul that's where that flag continues to fly today. We believe, regarding uh, what we're hearing about this one, is very positive that it was completely uh, taken back. Uh, we're looking for sort of an announcement to that fact, and we might have had a, uh, a precursor to that announcement already made, but I don't believe that has been made here in this country yet. We have not heard that uh, that I know of, but I believe that uh, they are making really good progress on uh, ISIS, uh, and I believe that there are, well, I know that there are many, many arrests that were taking place before they were able to flee into Syria. So, uh, very good things happening over there uh, from that point of view, and we have help, of course, uh, from other countries, uh, special forces aiding in that, in that uh, battle take that and eradicate that uh, threat from the region. Ah, let's see what else is going on. I know that I know that we had that system we talked about uh, that is being utilized to put everything that we're looking forward to in effect. And I know that that new system is uh, sort of part and parcel of, of the new SIPS system and how that is uh, being integrated with the SWIFT system. The SWIFT has been integrated into the SIPS and can now operate at the speed that the SIPS system, which a transaction can take from 18 seconds to 52 seconds to go around the world. And it's very, very quickly. And these are turning into basically ledger-to-ledger -ledger transactions. And that's really a positive thing. Uh, and it's really cool that they've been able to incorporate the SWIFT system uh, as part of this uh, SIP system. So it's, it's kind of like an all-new SWIFT system. And I think they may or may not even utilize the name of the SIPs that was put together. But it's really a good system, and I like the fact that it's working very, very well. And uh, we understand that um, the banking system that we are using to make sure every all the banks are online, all the banks are updated on their rates, everything's connected, all of that, uh, we understand they, uh, is running flawlessly as well. And I understand it's, it's so good that it's, uh, th that a number, I mean a big number of arrests were taken uh, place, in, uh, let's say, uh, up, and th up and through Saturday, last Saturday that uh, really, really needed to happen for people that were trying to game the system. And uh, they, were, they were caught immediately. So uh, I think really when it comes to uh, good versus evil, I think good is starting to uh, take over. And it's definitely uh, it's a positive thing for us moving forward. So I'm very positive, very good about that, R really positive about where we're going in that direction. Uh, where are we now? Uh, we had thought that by now we would have had a celebration call recorded, but we're here on a live call tonight, and we know that things are, are definitely being done and moving in the right direction. Uh, I know some things that I cannot talk about, but I will tell you this, um, where we were supposed to have the Zim platforms paying out last night, those were not done as far as I know, and we think that those will take place possibly, 
possibly tonight, but I'm understanding more likely tomorrow. Um, I think that we are very close to receiving the toll-free number that we're looking for to get our appointments made and start, but I still believe that um, that might not come until, let's call it the weekend, meaning tomorrow or Saturday, something like that. We'll see. We're moving along nicely uh, in that, and I believe the, the impetus is to go ahead and do this and get this done. I believe that's what I heard today, that, that the order was given to go ahead and get this thing going um, for us. And so we'll see how that manifests in the next uh, number of hours or days. So I'm feeling very positive about where we are, even though I really thought that we would be exchanging by now. We are looking for the exchange centers, the so-called redemption centers, to go from active to um, engaged status. And when that occurs, that, of course, is go time for us. Uh, so we're looking forward to that, um, that change. And my understanding was that that could come at any moment, but I'm thinking more likely um, maybe tonight, but I'm not so sure it'll, go, it'll change over until, until a little later. So I wish I could bring you a little bit more uh, detail on where we are, but some of the detail is a little too sensitive and we can't really get there tonight. <laughs> so let me go back to where I was talking about uh, the bonds, the sovereign bonds that were a trillion dollars worth of bonds that were being offered by the nation of Iraq. And you guys know that uh, the president and uh, Steven Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, discussed the, uh, the trillion dollars worth of infrastructure bonds that we, or excuse me, the trillion dollars worth of infrastructure that we want to see done here in the U.S., and um, the way that that would be paid, um, you know, the, we really don't want to see that coming out of the budget. We really don't want to see that as a budget item. We don't want to see that as something that taxpayers, per se, are paying for. And I believe they've done a pretty good job, although not as good a job as I had hoped, about explaining the idea of that coming from the private sector or a partnership between private and public funds is how it's been worded. I would like them to talk a little bit more about a, a definite partnership with the private sector so that no public funds are used for the infrastructure. Now, here's what I mean by that. If a rock can offer a trillion dollars worth of sovereign bonds and pay pretty decent rates on those, three months, six months, uh, nine, 12 months, 15 months, and so on, periods of time for those bonds, why couldn't we, as the United States, offer federal bonds, kind of like U.S. savings bonds, but we'll just call them U.S. Uh, bonds used for infrastructure, why couldn't the government offer that? And many of us, on the big call and beyond, guys, we got five and a half, six million people that are going to be liquid as a result of this exchange, not to mention those that have been gifted, Zim and Dong and Rupia, some gifted dinar, not as many, but you know, there's a lot of people out there. I'll bet you we're going to have more like 20 million people that will be blessed by this. Not just those of us that have been in this a while uh, and got in a long time ago. Do you realize I've started my 13th year uh, yesterday, March 1st, in, in this scenario, in this blessing, if you will? So what about the idea of using either government bonds, and it's not an either or, it should be both, government bonds that might be uh, given tax credits, possibly um, some type of uh, tax exemption, federal tax exemption on the bonds for those. And maybe they pay 3 or 4%. They're not going to be huge. Maybe 3 3.5%, whatever. It doesn't really matter. But if we ended up using some of our funds to 
buy those bonds to build up our infrastructure, what could be better than that? You know, we got to put this money somewhere. We're going to leave it in the bank or we're going to invest it some way, but why not invest it in our country through the purchase of these bonds? And forget $1 trillion, why not offer $10 trillion worth of these bonds and really get some stuff done? Okay? Now, what about on the state level? What about the various states? Why couldn't the states offer double tax exempt bonds or something that was three or three and a half, four, four uh, percent return? And maybe they were, you know, five year bonds. It wouldn't matter. It wouldn't really matter to us. If we could stick our money into some bonds for infrastructure and education and schools and airports and all of the stuff that we need to to rebuild as we rebuild America, why can't the states do that? Why can't the states put out bonds like that that we can take advantage of if we live in that state, right? And then we get a, a tax exemption, uh, you know, by investing in those bonds. But I think really we should do both. I think we should have a number of states that offer these infrastructure bonds and I think the U.S. should offer at, at the federal level uh, infrastructure bonds. And guys, why wouldn't we on the big call as we rebuild America? That was our plan anyway, to rebuild America. Why don't we do it? And it's okay if we get a little return on it. I'm not crazy about, you know, I mean, that's all right. You get 3 or 4%. It's not that big a deal. But why couldn't we do it? Use bonds to rebuild the country, rebuild America. Come on, I'm putting it out there. Those of you that are listening from the administration to my call, you know, what do you think? Our banking partners that are listening to the call, sometimes we have over a thousand banking partners and, and financial partners listening to the call, <laughs> per call. You know, guys, is this something that I'm just out there on? Or I don't think so. I think this is a very real, realistic, possibility to put this out I really can see this I can see it happening and I think it'd be something that those of us on this call with with you know we only run six or seven thousand listeners per call that are live and then we have a number of people on the recording that listen and we have a number of people that get the link across the world that listen in that are maybe not American but why couldn't those of us who live here rebuild America using these infrastructure bonds? So I'm, I'm, I'm done talking about it, but I really think this is an idea that we should, that the administration should go for. I think between our Treasury Secretary and our President and uh, all of the, the people that are smart, a lot smarter than I am uh, can put their heads together on this and work with our, our banks that are going to be involved with us. I think we've got something, guys. I don't know what you guys think about it, but I think it's got merit, and I think the president would like this concept because I think as we rebuild America together, um, this is something we'll be doing, and then, of course, we'll also be doing things for other countries across the world. You know, we're not going to stop here, but we sure as heck are going to start here. Anyway, I just feel like there's something to this. God gave me this idea, and I felt like bringing it up. I mean, look, guys, if Iraq can do it, if Iraq can put out a trillion dollars in infrastructure bonds, sovereign bonds, why couldn't we put out at least $10 trillion, at least? And, and I'm telling you guys, it's, it's just, it wouldn't even be... It wouldn't even be difficult for us to do it. It wouldn't even be at all a challenge to do that. We could easily come up and pick up all of that $10 trillion, easily. Several of us could do it. So, so what I'm saying is, guys, federal government, administration, you guys put out your tent pegs. You start widening and, and expanding your tent, too, just like we are. Because this has real merit, I believe. I think we can really go somewhere with that program. The intel portion of this call is usually a lot of fun. There's not a whole lot to give you tonight except what I said, other than we are very, very much right there 
in the moment. I don't know if this is something that could happen tonight. I've been told it could, but I think I think we're really looking good for a Friday Saturday start. And I just wanted you guys to know that's that's where we are on the intel.